Hello, this is John from GEDMathLessons.com. Uh, I'll tell you a little bit more about my free GED Math uh, online course at the end of this video. But this particular video is going to be all about circles. Okay, and of course, uh, for the GED, you definitely need to um, have a pretty good uh, working knowledge of circles. So we'll cover a good amount in this video, then I'll leave you with some follow-on suggestions um, at the end. So here I have a circle, okay, and we're going to go ahead and actually um, uh, make sure you understand some of the more um, common type of task or problems that are going to be involved with circles, okay? So I'm going to just write these down here. So the first is circumference. And by the way, too, if you follow me on my channel, and I would suggest that you do if you're studying math or GED, I've done a lot of um, other videos in the past on circles. So there's a lot of other uh, stuff on my channel as well. So some of this could be review, but again, it's definitely worth watching again and reinforcing your knowledge. But um, so we want to go ahead and find the circumference. That's one thing we want to be able to do. And then we want to also be able to find the area. So these are two big uh, uh, tasks when we um, are talking about uh, circles. Okay. So and then there's a couple other things. We're not going to really get into it too much, but I might talk a little bit about sectors as well. All right. So let's go ahead and start with circumference. So circumference, this word here, is simply just the length or distance around the circle. Okay, so if you took like a string and you kind of went around the circle this way, right, and you wanted to know the length around the circle, that is what that word circumference means. That's all it is. Okay, it's the it's the length, the distance around the circle. But we don't really use the term distance or length. The technical term we use is circumference. So in all of these uh, situations that we're going to be looking at, we need to know the formulas. Okay, so the circumference of a circle is basically there's two formulas. They're, they're equivalent, but I'm going to go and give them to you now. So one is 2 times pi times the radius, and the other one is the diameter times pi. Okay, so again, to use these um, um, formulas, we need to understand what the terms are, right? So we have radius and diameter. So let's go ahead and just make sure you understand what those are. So again, these are equivalent formulas, and we're gonna actually do find the circumference for this particular circle here in a second. So the radius of a circle is nothing more than the distance that starts from the center of the circle that goes out to the end of the circle, okay? That's all the radius is. So from a circle, the center, you, the radius is the same. So this distance here is the same as this distance here, okay, and this distance down here. So in this picture or this uh, figure I have um, right here, the width of the circle is 10 inches. So the radius is going to be half of the width, okay, so that's going to be 5. Now the width is how wide the circle is. We have a more technical term that we want to use, and that's diameter. So the diameter is the width of the circle. In this particular um, circle here, it's 10 inches. Okay. Now, we also have the radius. The radius is one half of the diameter. Okay. So you can see if I have 5 inches here and I have 5 inches here, it adds up to 10. So the diameter or the radius in this problem is 5 inches. All right. So once you understand what the radius and diameter is. Basically, this is pretty straightforward calculation. So let's go ahead and calculate the circumference. I'll, um, I'll use uh, both formulas here. So let's start with the first, 2 pi r. So the circumference is going to be 2 times pi times the radius, which is 5. Okay. Now, being I have two simple numbers here, this is all multiplication, 2 times pi times 5. I can go ahead and write it this way. Two, I can um, the order in multiplication doesn't make a difference. So in other words, I can rewrite the order here and write this as think of this as two times five times pi. So I'm going to get ten times pi. Now one thing I haven't addressed here is this pi symbol. So let's go ahead and do that now. When we're talking about circles in mathematics, you must understand what this uh, symbol is pi. 
pi is nothing more than a symbol that represents a number, okay? It's approximately, the number is approximately 3.14, okay? You need to absolutely know this. Now, if you have your calculator available, you can actually pull up a more accurate um, decimal for pi because technically this number never ends. It goes on and on and on and on and on and on. It's what we call an irrational number. It, it doesn't repeat and it never ends. So we can only get an approximation of it. So for your purposes, I would go ahead and stick with the decimal approximation of 3.14. Okay, so here, if we wanted to actually find what the circumference is, you can just take 10 and multiply it by 3.14. And let's go ahead and do that now. I'll get my calculator out and that should be a pretty easy calculation. But if you want to work along with me, that's fine. So 10 times 3.14 is 31.4, okay, 31.4. Now, here's the kicker, okay? When, uh, when you're working with circles or in geometry in general, you want to be very um, uh, accurate with your units of measure, okay? So 30.14 what? Well, because the diameter is measured in inches, okay, because I have I have 10 inches here and the radius is inches, the circumference is also length, okay? So this is going to be in inches as well. It's very important that you understand that, okay, units of measure. Now let's actually uh, calculate the circumference again. We're going to get the same answer, but we'll use the diameter times pi. So the circumference would have been the diameter times pi. So if you have the diameter, which we did here, which was 10, it's simply going to be 10 times pi, and we're right back to where we're here, right? So the circumference is going to be 10 times 3.14, which again is going to be 31.4 inches. Okay, so depending on what you have, okay, if you have the radius, you'd want to use this formula, and if you have the diameter, you'd want to use this formula, but they're both equivalent. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and erase this here in a second. If you um, want to take notes, you know, you certainly uh, encourage you to do that. Maybe pause, take some notes. So I'm going to erase this, and we'll talk about area next. Again, I'm going to give you some uh, follow-on guidance uh, at the end of this video so you can kind of learn more about this and practice this. But let's go ahead and get into area. All right. Now, area, erase this here. The area of a circle is, well, the concept of area is, think of it like, let's say you had a big table, okay? Like, let's say, a, a, you know, a table in your kitchen that, um, you know, ha was a, a shape of a circle, okay? And you wanted to, for whatever reason, let's say, put wrapping paper or tile or whatever you wanted to do on the circle, okay? All right, and you would want to figure out how much wrapping paper would I have to buy in order to cover the circle completely, okay? That is the concept of area, okay? Now we'll get into uh, the units of measure and all that kind of stuff here in a second, but area for a circle is, again, calculated by a formula, okay? So the area of a circle is pi r squared, right? So area of a circle is pi r squared. And again, we have that, um, uh, number pi, right? That variable. Now, it would be um, actually going and calculate. So for this particular problem, is very straightforward. So again, you need to know the formula. So let's write that out. Area equals pi r squared. And then we just need to go ahead and actually plug in the values. Now, r is what? That's the radius, right? So the radius is half the circle. In this case, it's five, right? The entire width of the circle is the diameter. Okay, so that's the radius, that's the diameter. So the radius here, this r, will be 5. So let's plug things in. Now when you plug things in for formula formulas in mathematics, you always want to use parentheses. So I like to put a parenthesis here. The radius is 5 squared. So now this is where a lot of students make mistakes, uh, make, make mistakes when they, when they do these calculations. So Really pay close attention to what I'm going to tell you next, okay? We have a couple things going on here. We have pi being multiplied by 5 squared. So sometimes students go, well, okay, I'll multiply pi 
Okay, let's actually put in that value here for a second. Let's replace the pi with 3.14, right? So we have 3.14, which is the same as pi, times 5 squared. So if you're not familiar with the order of operations, which is basically, what do I do first? Do I multiply first or do the powers first? Many students confuse this, so, so don't be one of those students that do that. You're going to get this problem wrong. You do not take the 3.14, multiply it by 5, and then square that. That's not what you do. You have to do this part first. You have to do the squaring or the powers first, and then the multiplication last. Okay, So if you remember that, you'll be okay here. So now the next thing is, what is 5 squared? All right, so 5 squared means 5 times 5. Okay, so 5 times 5 is 25, right? Okay, so 5 squared is 25, so we have 3.14 times 25. And then we go ahead and just finish this out. And it, obviously, you want to um, have a calculator handy, so let me go and get mine here. All right, so we have 3.14 times 25 is 78.5. 78.5. Now, 78.5 what? Well, because the radius was in inches, right? It was 5 inches, not just 5. We're really talking about units of measure here. The area is going to be in inches squared. Area is always measured... <clears throat> In units squared. So, for example, if we're talking about if this was in feet, area would be feet. The, the area would be feet squared. In other words, if the if the diameter was in feet, the area would be uh, measured in feet squared. If it was in centimeters, we got centimeters squared, etc. So, we had inches. So this is going to be inches squared. Very important uh, that you understand that. Okay. And on math teachers and tests, they kind of like to test your ability to understand the units of measure when we're talking about area, circumference, etc. So this is not a small, trivial detail. It's something you definitely need to know. Okay, so that's pretty much it. So we covered circumference and area. Not too difficult. Really, it's not too bad. Let me talk very quickly about sectors. Sectors, let me erase this. Sectors are basically like a slice of the, um, it's like a pizza slice if you will. Let me just get this here. I'll talk about when I'm you know, kind of get into this here a little more in a second. So sectors, right? Let's imagine this was a, a pizza, right? So kind of just draw a little bit like this. I've got a little pizza slices going on. All right. So this part right here, this would be considered a sector, okay? Now, obviously, you could have all types of different uh, sectors and, and dimensions, etc. But this is a sector of a circle. It's just a pizza slice. It's, a, it's part of the circle, okay? Now, with the circle here, we can often, sometimes we can be asked to find this length along the sector, okay? That's actually called the arc, okay? We would be finding the arc length. And we also could be finding the sector area, all right? Now, um, not too difficult, but... Again, just a little, I'm not going to go into it much more in this video because I don't want to extend it, but these are some things that you would want to uh, be able to learn. I've done some videos on my uh, YouTube channel on this, but let me go ahead and just wrap this video up and tell you where you could find more information uh, on this. So it's again that you continue to study this, you know, these videos that I do are meant to kind of be... Um, tutorials and really teach you as much as I can, but you can't learn... You're not going to be able to just master this stuff, you know, well enough for the GED. You're taking a big risk. You want to do some follow-on um, uh, uh, studying for it. So what I'd like you to do, um, if you find my videos helpful, is please, you know, please subscribe to my channel and then make sure you hit that bell notification to get my latest videos. I'm doing videos constantly. And then, of course, if you like the video, that helps me out. And leave me some comments. Um, yeah, let me know what, uh, you know, maybe concerns or questions you have. I try to read as many comments as I can um, just to, so I can keep making better videos. But uh, again, I want to invite you over to my free uh, GED uh, math course, gedmathlessons.com. It's been uh, really, really successful over the years. My background, if you, you can't already, uh, I've already uh, 
probably haven't figured out is I'm a math teacher, so I've been teaching for many, many years, and I've tried to kind of distill down what is really most important for those of you out there looking to pass a GED. Again, the GED since 2014 has become much more, um, uh, you know, challenging for lack of a better word. You really do need to know a good amount of algebra and geometry, but nothing that you cannot learn. And I'm talking to you, the folks that have were like in your mind's eye that were terrible in math or took math 30, 40 years ago. Trust me, you can pass. We have people going through my course on this site all the time that are passing. So I want to help you and get you inspired. You can do this, but again, you're going to have to invest in your education. And I'm trying to give you some of that, um, some of those tools and guidance. But I'll go ahead and leave a link in the description of this video. Again, gdmathlessons.com. But uh, thanks for watching and uh, have a great day.